Hey, what's up, guys? Mighty Miner has tunneled its way to the top of Clash Royale. The balance changes buff Mighty Miner's movement speed, so now he arrives on towers considerably quicker. On offense, it can crush towers in seconds. If opponents drop spam cards, they'll be feeding you value into the ability. And if the cost of the cards in the opponent's deck are too high, they'll have no chance of defending. So when you're running a mortar spam deck with Dark Goblins, Goblin Gangs, and Minion Hordes always rushing at your opponent, their elixir will be at an all-time low, giving you a ton of opportunities for your Minion Horde or Mighty Miner Miner to deal a finishing blow. If you don't have Mighty Miner, you can run Skeleton King or Cannon Card. But after the balance changes, this is one of the best decks in the game. So let's go jump straight at some games and assert dominance. Subscribe to the channel to stay connected for all the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's using Creative Code Star Tag to support the channel. All right, we got a game against Rafa. So Rafa is not cycling anything at the start. Kind of want to go in for a Goblin Gang just to see what he's up to. And if he goes in for anything to counter the Goblin Gang, a lot of times that bait card that you're going to need to counter is going to be right on your doorstep, whether it's a Dark Goblin or a Minion Horde, and you're going to be wasting your spells on a Goblin Gang instead. So that's kind of what we were hoping for. Wait, what I can do here is I can go Mortar in the other side and then use the Bomb to blow back the Phoenix, do a little bit of casual damage to it, and then protect the Mortar. Look at that! Look at that play! Isn't that awesome? The Executioner is going to straight up die to the Mighty Miner, and then we have a fully-fledged Minion Horde to devour all of his other stuff. No! Why is the mortar targeting the fisherman? Bro, that's the worst catch of the day, bro. You should 100 million percent go and target the tower. When we cleared a pathway, eliminating the executioner, we just didn't want to fulfill the bill. It's okay for us. We'll vibe with what we got, but that could have been so much better. Anyway, we're still not losing the game. We're up 800 damage. No, 900 damage. Okay, Miner just wanted to dig us a little bit more of a win. All right, I kind of want to go in for a mortar here, so please don't hit my tower. Awesome. If that locked onto my tower, that would have been miserable for me because it would have also killed my Dark Goblin because the Ram Rider has, you know, an actual attack as well. It's a very scary card if it gets near your tower. Wait, Fisherman should just die. I don't think I have to... No, I do have to respond to this, right? It would have gotten, like, one little fish slap on my tower, which would have equated to, like, 300 damage. I don't want to deal with that. Goblin Gang, give me value. Give me something. Give me anything right now. Remember, our homie has Executioner randomly tucked away in this deck. I don't know why, but I'm running Minion Hordes, so that's probably the reason why, you know? Whenever you don't want to be playing against a tragically horrible matchup and you have Minion Horde, a lot of times your opponent will randomly have the card that you don't want to see, whether it's Witch, Wizard, or Executioner. But it's okay. As you guys can see, Mighty Miner is able to protect everything. Got a present for you. No! And then if the Mighty Miner is not able to protect it, then the Miner will pick up where the Mighty Miner is slacking. So I'm going to Miner on defense here, and we know that the Mega Knight is going to jump, and i got to go in for a Minion Horde because the Minion Horde needs to be able to kill the rest of the egg. You know what? He's going to go in for an Executioner. I can't kill it. There's nothing I can do. I kind of got a lot of damage in the right-hand side, though. Wait, why is he Ram Rider in there? Oh my gosh, he's trying to pull the minions. But I want you to pull the minions, man. I need you to do that, actually. <gasps> oh my gosh, Dark Goblin's going to come in clutch because it has longer range than the Ram Rider. I can go in for a Miner here and then a log so the Executioner hopefully doesn't hit. Yo, that log was so nice. We're clean with it. I'm going to Fireball, so then hopefully the Dark Goblin locks onto the tower. Oh, we killed the Fisherman, but we didn't get the Dark Goblin to lock on. I'm going to go Goblin Gang here. I'm going to aggressively posture with my Mortar. Because I think that pulls the Ram Rider in the other side as well. Also, if he Mega Knights at that exact time, yo, you have nothing tanking. What is that delayed Electro Spirit supposed to do now, man? Nothing. All right, I'm going to Mighty Miner here. And then he's still taking damage. And I, I don't know what that Executioner was, but it seems like Moral Support. Wait, what? It didn't target on the Mighty Miner. The Executioner didn't hit the Mighty Miner. I guess it doesn't matter. This deck's defenses are rock solid. And this man got completely and utterly ravaged. GG, well played, and peace out. You barely even touched my tower. If you guys hate playing against Mega Knight decks, even if they have Execution or Electric Spirit, you'll destroy them with this Mortar deck. The Miner and Mighty Miner keep your bait cards alive so you can thrive. All right, we got a game against Monkey. What's up, dude? So obviously, if you don't want to cycle a single thing, we're chilling. Okay, the new and evolved Spear Goblin HUD. That thing packs a punch with three Spear Goblins always viciously coming at me. I want to go for a Miner here so that we can keep our Dark Goblin alive a little bit longer. Okay, that's fine. I'm okay with this. I can Mighty Miner in the middle. It will be able to kill the Skeleton King, and I'm hoping that the Spear Goblin HUD gets decayed a little bit further so that I can go in for a log and finish everything off. We want to be able to log this and kill all the Spear Goblins that spawn and finish off the hut. Yes, that's awesome. Look at that amazing trade. And then we can go Mortar in the middle, and that should pull the Balloon. And then we can go Dark Goblin here. I hope that that's enough to fully counter everything. The Lumberjack on the other side has got me worried, though. I don't know if he's going to go for a random arrows or something on my Goblin Gang. Please be preoccupied by the Dark Goblin. That's awesome. Literally zero damage taken. That was clean. So as you guys can see with this deck, if you have good mechanics, you are just going to be able to trounce whatever your opponent spams. 
and we know that we are going to end up having Mortar, Fireball, and Minion Horde to kill conveniently whenever he decides to go in for a Balloon. So that's what we're going to be aiming for. We've got our defense all sorted out. Kind of want to go in for a Minion Horde here, but I'd rather Miner on defense in the back and not show him that I have Minion Horde. I could maybe go Minion Horde plus Miner on the other side, but it's just not really a safe decision right now. I want to save that, and then when he decides to go in for a really bad decision of maybe going in for, you know, an aggressive uh, Balloon, then he thinks that our Mortar's out of cycle. He's going to get mesmerized by how much value we can get. So I can click the ability and rush other lane. Okay, that's really good for us because we can go in for a uh, Dark Goblin here. The Mighty Miner is going to give us value if I go in for the ability it's just for 300 damage. If I'm not going to be able to get a lot of value with the Mighty Miner on the tower, I might as well click the One Elixir ability to guarantee 300 damage instead of just like the Tickle because it takes a while for the Mighty Miner to do significant value since it has to ramp up its damage like an Inferno Dragon. So if you're just going to Tickle the tower, might as well click that ability every time. We go for a miner here. Hopefully we can pull back the Skeleton King. Yo, let's go, goblins. Oh no, yes, yes, okay. That was playing with my heart for a while. I didn't know what was gonna happen. Okay, definitely wanna go Minion Horde here. Be bad, be bad, be bad, be bad. Be bad. Go for the balloon. No, he didn't do it. Oh, I tried to hold onto that card to the last possible second to maybe give him the thought process of like, oh, I can go for a balloon. And uh, he didn't fall for it, unfortunately. We can Fireball and Log and finish off the Witch. I kinda wanna go for a Fireball first, if possible. Am I able to hit the Witch with the Fireball? Yes! I hit the Spear Goblin Hut and also the Witch. I threaded the Needle. That was not easy to do, my dudes. We know he's going to Lumberjack Balloon me, and that's fine. Wait, I missed it. Notice me! No! Um, maybe it's not fine anymore. <laughs> maybe it's not fine anymore. Wait, the Lumberjack? Oh, it doesn't rage it up. Wait, that was so good! We were able to pull the Lumberjack far enough away that the Balloon wasn't getting raged up. That was so unintendedly amazing. Oh, man, that was incredible. The Mortar's doing so much damage on the other side, too. Wait, what I can do right now is go Goblin Gang to force out more Elixir because it's hard for him to deal with this. Especially when he doesn't have the splash damage of the Skeleton King, he might have to go for Witch, which he would definitely not want to do. All right, we're going to go in for a Mighty Miner here. Remember, he doesn't have, like, Wizard, so he's got Witch and Freeze. It's not going to be able to kill the Minion Horde that quick, man. That's definitely not going to kill the Minion Horde that quick. What are you going to do? Are you going to go in for, like, a Freeze on top of the Minion Horde that will stay alive? Probably not. So we're going to aggressively posture with our Mortar and also maybe even go in for a Mighty Miner ability so then it goes on the other side, hopefully. That did nothing because he used the Tornado. He pulled the Mighty Miner as I clicked the ability, and then it screwed everything up. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's fine, though. I can go for a log. Definitely able to kill this and then go in for another Miner and then Goblin Gang. The reason why I'm posturing on the left-hand side a little bit more is because I already have the Mortar there. And I think I'll have even damage anyway. And if he gets counter push, I'd much rather have him get counter push on the side that he doesn't have any damage on. So it's kind of important to do that. I'm going to Minion Horde preemptively. Expect him to go in spam. If he doesn't, that's also okay. We can go in for a Fireball and Log on top of the Witch. And then I can go for another Miner. As you guys are noticing, we're just trying to keep up the aggression so we can never afford a huge push. Wait, he's tornadoing it back. We can pre-log. Oh, I wasn't able to get it down in time. But I don't think it's going to matter. That Miner is going to dig us a victory. Come on, Miner. Why do you have to disappoint me? You want me to go and drop the Poppy Miner? You got to make me drop the Mighty Miner? Nah. I can go for a Fireball. The Mighty Miner isn't strong enough to dig tunnels to the other side. But the regular Miner is. Someone has to tell me how that makes sense. You would think if the Mighty Miner is a wiser and older Miner, he would have known all the tricks that the Miner already knew. But maybe he got so old that he forgot everything. All right, we got a game against Caden, and they've got a lot of cycle cards in their banner. So if we see Valkyrie, Ice Spirit, and Skeletons, likely going to be a deck with those cards, right? Oh, Bomber. Huh. Interesting to see Bomber in the back. That's usually with Electro Giant or with like a really aggressive Royal Hog stack. We'll have to wig and figure out what this man's packing for us today. We are able to finish off the Bomber with the Dark Goblin and then also be able to kill the Egg as well, so that's nice. Not going to overspend to defend. Oh my gosh, tragic. Why do you have this deck, man? No. When I cycle my Mortar, he's got the Electro Giant. So bad for us. I got to go for our Spear Goblins off to the side. We know that they're likely going to die. And as you guys can see, this guy is not a super nice person. When he gets an advantage, he laughs at us a bit. I'm going to use my Minion Horde here. I'm going to try to make a prediction on a Mother Witch. If we can hit that, that would be amazing. I need to be able to hit a Mother Witch or an Execution or something here. Because this Tornado is out of cycle. Wait, what is that? Um, <laughs> two thumbs up for me, big dog. That was incredible. That was uh, some spectacular misclick that I've never seen before in my life. My man used the Defensive Elixir Collector. If you guys didn't know, in 2016 in Clash Royale, that actually used to be a play. Elixir Collector used to have so much HP that you could use it on defense, fully counter a Hog Rider and not care. That is when like Molt and Nick were the best players in the world. It was a huge throwback.
All right, so I should be able to kill that and then also be able to finish off the bomber. And then, you know, I need to cycle back to another mortar here. So that's what we're going to try to do. I don't know if it's going to be feasible for us to do that, but I always have to keep the mortar in cycle for the Electro Giant. Otherwise, I am definitely dead. Wait, can we kill that with just Spear Goblins in our tower? I don't know if that was smart on my end. I guess I got so excited because, you know, we had a seemingly good situation against an Electro Giant after we had already gotten in a very bad position. So I, I think cycling the mortar is pretty much a death sentence in this matchup. You kind of have to keep it every single time for your opponent that is going to end up having their aggressive Electro Giant that could be spammed at the river, right? Got to have a building to be able to pull that. Why are you tornadoing that tor closer to the tower? Oh, the Phoenix Bird is going to be able to do death damage to the Minion Horde, but oh my gosh. Wait, what? He lost almost his entire tower there with that. <laughs> that was really incredible. So this is what you want to do. You want to drop your mortar in this positioning. It's going to be able to pull as far as possible so the Electro Giant can't lock onto the tower. And then you can go and distract the rest of their stuff with the Goblin Gang, your Minion Horde, or whatever, and be completely okay. So I'm going to go for my Minion Horde here, and notice how the Electro Giant is just targeting the mortar, and the mortar is fully finishing off the E-Giant. No damage will be taken on my tower here. We can cycle back to another one because, you know, we're clean with it. We got that quick card cycle. We out here. He thought we were locking on the Elixir Collector, but nah, dude. We're locking and loading on the tower. We have all the power. And despite him, you know, cycling another helpless Electro Giant at the river and BMing me at the start, there was literally nothing he could do when I figured out what I wanted to do in this matchup. We made a misplay. We cycled our mortar. It wasn't the right decision. We accommodated the situation. We realized, hey, save your mortar on defense. Do that perfect positioning that I was showing in the last couple defenses. And if you do that, you'll be walking away with wins against Electro Giant every single time. Hey, this guy finished 374 in the world. So he is actually going to be a very talented player. Let's see what he's up to. Come on, go and spam me right into my minion horde. That's what we wanted, brother. As long as you don't fireball my minion horde, we're in a great spot. Please go in for a Musketeer that I can predict with a Miner. I know this is a very predictable placement, but I'm hoping that we can hit it. Okay, he's going to go Goblins. I'm going to log those so then maybe the Minion Horde is able to lock on a tower. I don't think so, but yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was a pipe dream. It was hopeful. It was optimistic, and it didn't really work out. So the guy is showcasing Tornado, Goblins, and Hog Rider. I think it's going to be Executioner, Hog Rider with either Rocket, Lightning, or Earthquake. Probably Rocket, the most commonly played spell in the game right now. So if I had to guess, he'd probably go in for... Okay, I thought he was going to Executioner there. Uh, I'm going to go for Mighty Miner, and I think that the Mortar retargets onto the tower, which is huge for us. He should pre-log. Yeah, he does. Anyone that's good at the game realizes the card cycle and then makes those type of plays, so that was extremely well played on his end. And uh, we're going to drop our Dark Goblin a little bit further away so it doesn't get assassinated by the Valkyrie. Rather, keep our Dark Goblin healthier so we can apply more aggression here. This guy is going to be our first challenge of the day, and I'm ready for it. So he's probably going to go in for like an Executioner if I went Minion Horde, but he would likely not drop it in a spot that I could predict it. Because it's just so obvious if I Minion Horde here, the Executioner there, it's just... I don't know. What do we want to do? Do I still go for it? I think I can go in for the, the Miner and predict the Executioner. No, he went for a Hog Rider there. I thought if he went for a Valkyrie, he would expect me to go Minion Horde, and then he would go Executioner, and we try to make a prediction on that. But it didn't really happen. He's going to Exe any second. That's just going to be annoying. Oh, wait. Are you going to go Ice Spirit? Are you going to eat the damage? Wow, that's not the smart decision. You actually ended up wasting four Elixir instead of getting Executioner, which would have been one more Elixir, and it would have given you Counter Push. So I'm surprised he did that, judging by how well he played earlier. Okay, so I'm going to go in for a Goblin Gang on the right-hand side, and we're going to use our Mighty Miner to the best of our ability, hopefully. Just want to eviscerate those Goblins, hopefully get some nice damage on the Valkyrie as well, keep the Spear Goblins alive, and force out a Log. Force out a Log, that would be good for us. Ooh, look at the Spear Goblin damage. What is he doing? Oh my goodness, dude. What are those? That's a lot of value. So we're going to Mortar in a spot that he's likely going to go in for a Hog Rider and then Xe. Um, that's, that's what we were expecting the entire game. It just didn't happen for a while. Uh, with the Dark Goblin coming down, I think we can just log this and not take any damage. And then Mighty Miner and cycle back to the Mighty Miner. So this is good. This is very nice for us. All right, so the Executioner is out of cycle, so he'll probably rock it on top of a Minion Horde. Hmm. I'm going to Minion Horde here. We'll see if he just goes in for the Rocket. I think he's going to rock it on the Mighty Miner as well. We'll have to wait and see if we can get anything. I don't want a Miner in the back because I think it could just get too risky. I'm going to go in for a Mortar here now, and he pre logs so we can go Goblin Gang with the Miner on the right-hand side, so this is really, really nice. I do have to go for a Dark Goblin, otherwise the Hog Rider will hit my tower. Notice how the Goblin Gang locks onto the tower and forces out the Tornado because he had a bad card cycle, and now we, we know that he's not going to be back to Tornado for our next Miner that we can, again, drop in the back. With the Tornado out of cycle, you can always drop the Miner in the back instead of in the safe spot because we don't have to worry about him activating King Tower. He just doesn't have an ability to do that. I'm going to Fireball here so we can guarantee that we get more damage, and hopefully we don't end up hitting the Goblins. I really wanted to. 
kind of have to go for a mortar on defense if he goes in for a hog rider. I don't have enough elixir right now, so I'm trying to just like go goblin gang. As you guys noticed, I couldn't go goblin gang to counter immediately because I or minion horde to counter immediately on the Valkyrie side because I needed to have enough elixir to go and counter the rest of his stuff. You always want to save enough elixir to go and counter the hog rider with a mortar, so you can't go for a five elixir cost card like a minion horde. Minion horde just costs too much. It would be a very bad decision. All right, so use log so I can go in for a mighty miner again and then go in for a goblin gang and then try to go in for an ability here maybe and then try to go for a mortar in the other side and maybe the mighty miner is able to kill the hog rider a little bit faster so then you know we can get more value afterward we're gonna go dark goblin as well I don't love the fact that he keeps going for log there that's not that smart we know he's gonna go execution or goblin so we're gonna pre-log them hopefully let's go that's so clean because I think the dark goblin might lock on the tower nope dude why are you so good at the game why did you have fast enough fingers to go in for that hog rider man Come on, man. You're, you're really testing my mechanics here, and I don't appreciate it. All right, so we're going to have to go in for a Fireball, and then I'm going to have to go in for a Miner on defense, and I'm going to have to go in for a Mighty Miner here. Probably a Tornado and try to line everything up, and I hope that that doesn't work. It did work, unfortunately. We're going to go Dark Goblin. We're going to pre-log the Goblins or an Ice Spirit. Yeah, he drops Goblins so far back that the Dark Goblin doesn't give us as much damage as we wanted. We're in a Miner here, and then the Executioner probably will end up doing a lot of damage, so we got to go in for a Dark Goblin as well. I think that we are able to kill the Hog Rider without a hit, without Dark Goblin. Oh, it still got a hit! No way! Oh, I think I might have won that one if that didn't get the shot. Really good player. Sometimes I lose games when we play against an Executioner, Valkyrie, Tornado, Log player, but... But you know what? This guy was an incredibly talented player, and I have no problem losing to him. GG and well played, we'll bounce on the next one. Are you on the Apollo spaceship or something? He's gonna immediately go in for a Battle Ram, so that's not a good decision. You're not even going to be able to stop the mortar. Like, you're targeting on top of the mighty miner instead of the mortar. Let's go. That's a lot of damage. That is absolutely destroying you. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. He's got three musketeers, so that's not super scary for me. I'm just going to let that roll. The mighty miner is going to give us a lot of damage. Why would I waste a one elixir ability when I don't need to? I'm going to fireball here. Last possible second. Maybe encourage you to go and cycle something else there. Giving you the opportunity and more time to make more of a misplay. That's how we play Clash Royale. Always giving our opponents more time to spam more stuff into our spells. And spear goblins are going to put us in a pretty big advantage. So I love that. We're currently up 2,000 damage. We're popping off and this deck is dominating. Wow, you're going to go in for a aggressive giant in the back. So you definitely end up having three musketeers with elixir collector. So in this type of situation, it's important that I save my miner because we need to be able to snipe that elixir collector. I also am going to make a prediction. If he drops it in the middle, I will pre-log go goblins probably. I think he'll have to go in for goblins. That's what I would expect. Yeah, so he's going to go goblin gang. So maybe I can go in for an aggressive miner here and then pre-fireball the goblin gang so we can guarantee that we kill that and the elixir collector. I know I'm fine. But the money makes me handsomer. Let's go. I knew his deck. See, when you've played against these decks before, you can make predictions and just showcase that, you know, maybe you've played the game for six years in Clash Royale. Uh, so, yeah, we got to go and touch grass. And the only thing that's green that I'm touching is goblins, guys. So here we are. We're going to go and drop our goblin gang. We're going to get a lot of damage on the tower. And maybe I can go for a mighty miner aggressively as well. Remember, he's only going to have giant or like minion horde right now to counter this. And if you go in, oh, you're going to three musketeers. That's not a counter at all. We're able to use the bomb to get a lot of damage on the three muskies and then basically whittle them down to the point that I don't even have to worry about it. The one musketeer on the left-hand side will give him some damage, but do I even care, really? I, I don't think I care that much because I can minion horde, guarantee that I kill the musketeer, destroy the giant as well, eat the musketeer damage on the other side, and then get minion horde counter push value. So I'm going to go in for the mi miner in the back, so then he's going to have to drop something in the front and in the back to counter the minions and the miner. And if you go in for a goblin gang and you try to defend this, then I go and unleash the mortar when you're down elixir. So... This is just a stomp right now, and as you guys can see, this man is absolutely in misery. There's not much you can do when the mortar's on the tower, and that's why you run Fireball with mortar most times over Poison, because the Fireball can immediately eliminate minion hordes. It can immediately eliminate cards that would target the mortar, allowing the mortar to get more shots on the tower. So, mortar is really, really good with Fireball. Also, minion hordes, so you can wipe away executioners, blow things back, maybe make some crazy outplays. That's why we like this deck so much with Fireball. Also, I'm able to fireball two of the musketeers. I don't hit all of them. It's fine. It doesn't necessarily matter that much. We're able to log down that tower and, you know, log this man out of the existence and send him straight to the Shadow Realm. So GG and well played. It was a pleasure taking your trophies and that outplay at the start with the fireball and the goblin gang was unbelievably satisfying. He didn't even show the card yet, but I saw the future. Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an incredible rest of your day.